Hey everybody, this is Hercules Penix, founder, curator, docent, and gift shop employee of the Hercules Penix Academy of Comic Book Studies. Today we're going to be looking at The Son of Satan, number eight, from Marvel Comics. This is uh, 1976. This was the last issue of Son of Satan, and uh, strangely enough, it's also a fill-in issue. Um, I guess Son of Satan was going to end anyway, but they had this black and white comic a Son of Satan comic. It was planned for the black and white magazines. And I guess they uh, didn't want it to go to waste. So they figured, eh, we got this basically free art. We already paid for it. Let's put out one more issue of Son of Satan. And uh, I think the m main reason, though, is because the art's fucking phenomenal. And it's uh, we'll find out in a second who did it. But the cover is by Gil Kane and Ernie Chua. Uh, Gil Kane probably did every other cover that Marvel published in the mid-70s. It was crazy, and they were all great. And Ernie Chua, long-term inker of Conan the Barbarian. Uh, I think he's uh, from the Philippines, and um, very illustrative. Uh, so it's kind of weird seeing Kane and Chua because Kane had a very loose, <clears throat> dynamic style, and Chu was just very kind of not as dynamic, definitely, and illustrative. So let's crack this open and look at the credits. And I'm going to say right off the bat the reason why this issue is so phenomenal because it's Ross Heath, the most one of the top ten in the top ten of all time great comic artist illustrators. I mean, this guy never drew a bad comic. He was, everything was impeccable. Uh, started in the late 40s, uh, was briefly part of EC Comics, and then went on to do thousands of pages of uh, war comics. That was his forte. And a lot of Westerns. Didn't do much superhero stuff, uh, you, you know, once he got a little older. But... Um, just, and this is, he's drawing in this comic like he's never drawn before. You're going to be amazed when I, some of these panels and pages, you're not going to believe it's Russ Heath. It's fucking amazing. This, uh, it's written by Bill Mantlo, so it's not very good. Um, and, uh, maybe the fact that Archie Goodwin is editor is why this came about. Because Archie Goodwin had a good eye. And he was probably like, guys, we cannot let this Russ Heath comic just languish in the vaults. We're going to publish one more issue of Son of Satan to get this out there. So it's called Dance with the Devil, My Red-Eyed Son. And apparently, uh, son of, uh, let's call him Damien Hellstrom. Damien. I don't want to keep calling him Son of Satan. That's kind of a s silly name. Damien apparently has been summoned by this character. He's like, who are you? Why have you called me? And this hooded character says, I am one who cares for you, Damon, one who loves you. But how are you? The others are waiting. This beautiful Russy Dart. Oh, shit, I gotta find out who colored this because that is amazing. Don Warfield. I think he just was in comics for a few years doing colors. But look at this. That is so Really nice color, and considering this is crappy newsprint paper, you know, that's a really uh, nice use of uh, the palette, the limited palette available. So he hits her with uh, some hellfire. That's what Damon Hellstrom could uh, use his pitchfork and uh, shoot soul fire. Look at the, the bricks on the wall, how he drew everyone with the light reflected off of them, making shadows in the little crags. It's just amazing stuff. And so the, uh, the hooded character is unaffected. It's a woman, it turns out. And it turns out that uh, as she takes her hurt off fully, she says, you've committed the same sins I committed so many years ago. 
And he's like, by the seven circles, it can't be. You're dead. This is just another one of father's tricks. You're not my mother. So apparently it's his mother. I think the origin of Damon Hellstrom is, uh, you know, his mother was human and Satan took her as his bride and he was the result, the spawn. So he's cast down into hell. Just every panel is fucking amazing in this. How beautiful this is. The suns of uh, the rays of light here. So he comes out into the landscape of hell and it's totally a uh, Hieronymus Bosch's famous painting. Uh, he just totally stole all those uh, characters from the painting. Oh, this is the time when Marvel Comics were only 17 pages. Two pages of ads and two pages of art, pretty much the whole issue. So now we get to see him clo close up. These are the characters of uh, Hieronymus Bosch and other ones that he created, but all intermingling. <laughs> Look how weird all these guys are, these goons. And he meets this one sinner, this denizen of hell. She's beautiful though. Look at this, these monstrosities. I, I've recently been reading a, a Russ Heath interview in Comic Book Creator Magazine, and uh, he never liked to draw things that weren't there. That's why he liked war comics. Um, I think Archie Goodwin was telling the story where, um, oh yeah, it wasn't an interview. It was Archie Goodwin from the 1973 Comic-Con, some, some New York comic convention booklet. And he's like, yeah, Russ, he just didn't like to draw fake stuff. He didn't like drawing fantasy or superheroes. So it's pretty amazing that he's so good at it. Because this stuff is fun as hell. So she's telling him that basically they were hoping he would take over hell. Because he'd be a kinder ruler. And he's saying, it wouldn't matter. I can't change the fate of someone's soul. And then this, you could tell this was done for a black and white magazine. These delicate lines here. And, uh, you know, normally a guy at Four Color Comics wouldn't draw like that. Because he would know that it would kind of be lost in the process. With the colors and everything. It kind of works pretty well though. Usually like when you take a black and white comic and color it, you know, the black and white artist drew it that way for a reason, to accentuate, you know, the things that black and white can bring out in art. But this looks pretty seamless. It's not like, uh, except for that panel, that looks like obviously like, that wasn't meant to be a color drawing. He just sees all these random, amazing visions of hell. Yeah, just, I gotta stop pointing out every panel because every panel is fucking amazing in this. Okay, here is where things get nuts. Look at this craziness. This is like psychedelic underground comic shit. Look at that panel. That's like P. Craig Russell, but times 10. Early P. Craig Russell. Oh man, that's good stuff. I love that too. So I guess what's going on is that one night a year, Satan sleeps. He actually, for 24 hours, and so the, the denizens of hell have a little relief 
it's not as bad for 24 hours as it is normally. Because it's Christmas Eve. So apparently every Christmas, Satan sleeps. And that's why Christmas is, you know, happier. It feels like it, you know, that's their rationale. He meets Mordred and uh, Morgan Le Fay. Of course, they're in hell. Oh, man. I think this is one of the best drawn comics, mainstream comics. This is in the top 10 of all time. This is just amazing stuff. I always loved Russ Heath, but, you know, he's just always drawing tanks and soldiers. Not my favorite topic. So seeing him unleashed, just drawing all this crazy stuff and so well, it's wonderful. So he's, uh, this woman is dancing with Damien, trying to sway him. So it's almost like there's a revolution brewing in hell. They're, they're going to overthrow Satan. And of course she turns into a scary skeleton lady. And then look at this weird... I guess he's doing a weird perspective shot. But it looks like Damien Hellstrom all of a sudden has a giant schnoz. So he pushes her away. I like how she calls him pig of evil. <laughs> so she was really just trying to lure him into the, the, the fires of hell. So all these monsters attack him. If they couldn't seduce him into it, they're gonna just use brute force. Look at that greatness. That's like a great comic cover, just a one tiny little panel. That would be an amazing cover. Oh, all the little coils of the snake's body is totally shaded and beautifully illustrated. And they're basically saying, you should join us in hell. He's like, I haven't sinned. It's like, your birth is blasphemy enough. The fact that your father's Satan. So then all of a sudden, all the monsters disappear. Kind of wakes up. He's knocked unconscious by one of these demons. And there's a guide there. And he says, follow me. And he sees the Tower of Babel. And there's a throng of people entering the city. And he sees himself, a man on a balcony and everyone's manhandling him. He's got a crown of thorns. He is me. Oh, Bill Manlo. Bless your heart. Four pages of ads in a row. Ah, Marvel. Okay, so this is interesting. I read about this in Tom Brevert's uh, blog. This was apparently, this is a, this is by John Romita. Apparently the original page of this was of Damien Hellstrom being crucified on a cross. And they realized that was probably too shocking for a comic code approved comic. So at the last minute, they uh, had John Romita whip this page out because it was going to press any minute. And they didn't even have time to color it. So this wasn't done for some cool effect, like, oh, that would be cool if this was in black and white. 
It was literally, they ran out of time. They didn't have time to color the page. I think that was pretty <laughs> neat little bit of insider information. Like, whoa, those deadlines were pretty tough. So, you know, his father, the devil's there. And he's going to nip this revolution in the bud. And then all of a sudden, the persecuted Jesus Damien, with his crown of thorns, is like behind his father. And so he basically uh, destroys all these people. I'm sorry. Well, they're not people. They're whatever. Denizens of hell. Another amazing panel. This was such a 70s thing writers would do. You know, like Don McGregor, guys like that. Um, Bill Mello wasn't up to his level, but, you know, he was influenced by that, like, Steve Gerber, Don McGregor, trying to be, like, I don't know, kind of pretentious writing. Postulate. You, Damon Hellstrom, have always considered yourself a being divided. Postulate. <laughs> what good would exist if you were, were it proved that both your parents, dot, 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 were totally and absolutely evil. So all this time, he thought his mom was like, you know, the good parent, and obviously Satan is the bad one. But he's finding out that his mother is just as bad. And he can't accept it. And we see Satan with his mother. She's getting all cozy with him. So they're like, then you obviously must be evil. And also this last page is, uh, I'm pretty sure it's Ramita again. Uh, they needed to wrap it up because I guess the story was going to continue in that black and white comic. But they just, like, I think Archie Goodwin wrote it at the last second. He wrote this dialogue and this plot ending. And I think it's John Ramita because he was in office, you know, he was the art director. And so Damien rejects them both and hits them with some soul fire or hellfire. And then here's the little twist. Because, you know, Satan is just like, how, how could this be happening? You were weakening. It cannot end like this. It's almost like he's dying, like, Damien is killing Satan. But then we see the twist is that he's waking up from a dream. It is over, Master. Christmas Eve is past. You are free to wake. <laughs> this was all a bad dream of Satan. Oh, man, what a comic. You know, not just kind of a silly, uh, silly story. Not much of a story. Actually, it's not, it's not that bad. Every now and then, Bill Mantlo did some good stuff. And, uh, I mean, I like a lot of Bill Mantlo. Don't get me wrong, but he never did anything that great. But, you know, I, I like Micronauts as much as the next Doofus and Rocket Raccoon miniseries. And here we have a little two-page Tom Sutton kind of uh, mystery story. I'm pretty sure this is a reprint from an old Marvel, older Marvel comic. And this is just a very dopey story with this guy, this mad scientist type, is uh, calling aliens down. He's He's got this amazing transmitter, a radio guidance beam, and he's calling the aliens down. And of course, he's going to, once they land, he's going to be take advantage of all their knowledge and do bad things with it. So he sees the ship opening, and then the creatures come out, and they step right on him. They're humongous. So this is like the cute little ironic twist. 
and the aliens are confused. They're like, hey, that radio guidance beam told us to come right here. I don't see anybody. <laughs> oh, gosh. And then one of them says, don't forget to wipe your feet, Fanton. We don't want to track anything back into the ship. <laughs> Moral, the bigger they are, the harder they fall. On you! <laughs> oh, that's so dumb. I kind of like it. Yeah, written and drawn by Tom Sutton. I don't think Tom Sutton wrote much stuff. <laughs> Maybe that's... We can see why. Oh, guys, no matter how much money you got to pay for this issue, buy it. It's... Well, I'm sure it's been reprinted in some of those omnibuses or whatever. The, the trade paperbacks, but... Just gorgeous, amazing art. It's so nice to see Russ Heath uh, use his imagination a little. And uh, I wish he did it more. But of course, what he did leave us, leave behind, is pretty fucking amazing. So I can't complain too much. I love all of his war comics and everything he's ever done. Just great stuff. I guess that's it then. Um, I hope to see you here uh, next time at uh, the Hercules Paddocks Academy of comic book studies.